So I cut down that big pork loin and I got lots of chops and I actually got two roasts. I have one here and then the other is in the crock pot for dinner for tonight. So I will never buy pork chops ever again because this pork loin roast that we got at Costco, you can get them for around $20, sometimes less even. I think I've even got them for $17 um, and you can get them for a little bit more but they're around that $20 mark and you can get so many pork chops. I probably could have cut a few more off of this and I could have cut a few more off of the roast that I was doing um, in my crock pot right now, but I actually, I wanted more roast. So anyways, I just did this this morning. Shane has gone to take our truck. It has a few recalls. Um, yay for having a brand new truck with recalls. Uh, so he ran to go take that to the dealer today, and I'm going to get the kids some breakfast. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Oh my God. So we're doing the three marker mm. challenge. And what is that? The three marker challenge is, is the Batman one. Well, we're doing the Batman three marker challenge, and you got to close your eyes or uh, just look away, and you got to pick a color, and you can only have three. And then you got to draw that person or thing on the paper. And you can either have a timer or, or you can... Oh, this is... And um, you can get a hat or something and you can put it in, the papers in it. And you got to know some names and <laughs> okay. you got to shake it up and then... Someone picks one, and then you read it, and then... And then, and then, and then? And then you uh, have to draw that one. Beautiful. So, Mom has had to be the judge. These are some of Colt's pages. Yes, those are all mine. These are all Colt's. So this is Harley Quinn, the Joker, and Batgirl. And these are Aubrey's. So that's the Joker, Harley Quinn, and Batgirl. So I have had to judge between these two people, but I'm about to go get a shower. So I have an idea for your judging. Okay. So I don't know if you can necessarily have a contest because you guys can't pick between you two, but what you could do is you each have to say one nice thing about the other person's paper. Oh, okay. And the one that I don't, you don't, you aren't a good drama? Well, I don't think that's very nice. No, no, like, something, like, for, like, the, for your paper. Okay. So you got to say that. Well, we'll see. But you have to say one nice thing, okay? Okay. About each other's pictures. Right? All right. All right, nice. off you go. Well, hey friends, it is mid-afternoon and I am ready to do some baking. I've got some um, cookies to make for our Christmas cookie exchange this Saturday. So if you're new to my channel or maybe you don't remember, um, we, the women in our family get together and we have a Christmas cookie exchange. We've been doing this now for, this may be the sixth or seventh year. Um, and we do like a gift exchange. Um, it's always like so much fun. So anyways, I'm going to make my grandma's um, cut out cookie recipe. And I also want to do some like pumpkin bread and banana bread and a whole bunch of foodie things. So I'm here in my kitchen. We got a lot of work to do. Okay, so here is my setup. This is from my Christmas planner. I have a sheet for recipes, um, and I printed out several of these sheets, and I just have copied all of the Christmas recipes and holiday recipes into these sheets. Um, anyways, this is my grandma's recipe, and yeah, I'm gonna get going. So I've got my butter, my sugar, and my vanilla cream together, and I'm gonna go ahead and add my eggs, but I wanted to give you a tip for when you're doing your baking. I always add my eggs into a different container first, one by one, before I put them into my batter. 
And the reason why this is so important is every once in a while you'll get a bad egg. I've had an egg with, you know, bits of blood or whatever in it, gross as it is, um, but you don't want that in your batter. So I always, one by one, add my eggs into a little dish or even just, you know, measuring cup, and then I add them in here. So I'm literally <laughs> sitting on a chair here in the kitchen. Um, the kiddos had left it in when they stopped baking. Um, I think I'm gonna do one more batch of dough, but I am just letting my um, mixing bowl, I just washed it and stuff, so I'm letting that kind of air dry for a second and I need to sit down because I've been on my feet for the past few hours and Mama is feeling it. So tonight, uh, Shane and I are going to something called a comfort service at our church and this is something new that I think they've done. I don't ever remember them doing it before. I'm fairly certain this is the first year that they have. Um, but it's designed to for people who are grieving um, or who are having like a difficult time kind of going into the holidays. <clears throat> um, we're gonna sing, from what I understand, we're gonna sing some like soft Christmas carols. There'll be some practical and heart um, information uh, for you know dealing with the holidays with loss and grief um, and then we're gonna do they have a, a Christmas tree in our lobby um, and it will we're gonna make a Christmas ornament for our loved one and hang it on the tree um, and there'll be some refreshments afterwards so I'm really looking forward to that um, Shane and I are going, uh, my father-in-law and mother-in-law are coming too, and Auntie Sarah is gonna come and watch the kiddos for us. So I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know if I'll really be able to film anything of that. I may um, film us a little bit of doing the ornament, we'll, we'll see, but for the most part, I just really wanna be concentrated on that event. Um, this morning, I knew kind of going into today that I just really wanted to be extra prayed up uh, because I knew I would be focusing on grief today and our loss and on heart. Um, and so I knew that I just needed some extra prayer, some extra journal time. Um, yeah, but for the most part, I mean, we are, I'm sorry, my arm is starting to hurt. <laughs> ah, I can't do it that way. Hold on. Oh shoot, now it's all backwards. <sighs> My phone. Okay. Sorry, my arm is starting to hurt and I still don't have a case on my phone, so I'm like holding it as tight as I can so that I don't drop it. I'm so scared to damage this phone. Um, but for the most part, we are doing really well. Um, but that's, you know, just not to say that each day doesn't have sadness and doesn't have moments where we're dealing with grief and our loss and the pain of um, him not being here. I know Colt especially is having a really rough time. Um, I've had several moments where I've had to, you know, talk to him about losing his brother and he just really misses him. So. Um, well, for the most part, we're doing good. There's, we're, it's just a part of our life now to walk this road, I guess, and focus on grief and loss and what we don't have every every day. So, um, anyways, I've sat here for three minutes now, almost four, and I need to get back and do my cookies. Um, I've, my roast should be, I mean, it's probably already done now. Um, so I am now making two loaves of pumpkin bread. Let me get those in the oven here. P 
because dinner is soon. It's in about an hour and that takes 45 minutes to an hour to cook. I doubled the recipe so I would get two loaves. <sighs> I kind of want to cook some more things. See that mess right there? That's a hot spot. And I have a plan for all of this stuff. It's always a hot spot, but it's a really mega hot spot when my husband is home because he lands all his stuff there. And I need to shut that door. Um, but I have a plan for it. So once I start working on that plan, I'm going to bring you guys along with me. Uh, but that's not right now. So a complete flip on her head of timing and things that have happened. Um, Shane's mom called and her parents who are elderly, I think Shane's grandpa's 95, um, ha they had someone in their house doing some, the cleaning the furnace, um, and there was a pipe that burst and there was a flood in their basement. Um, and so Shane is going to see what he can do about it, um, and, you know, try and fix the problem. So I gotta pull my bread out of the oven because town is like 20 minutes away. I'm pulling water in the sink. I've got my meat here in my little pan and we are getting ready to go. Hey friends, we're home. It is almost 10.30. Um, the comfort service was so nice tonight. Um, it just really hit something in me that um, I just really needed. It felt so good to be in a room with so many other people who were feeling a lot of the same emotions that I was. Um, it felt good to cry. It felt good to... Not that, I know that just sounds funny. It's not that it felt good to actually cry and feel sad and feel that emotion, but to know that I don't know. It's good to go through the to go through the grief and know that we are not stuffing it in and holding it in. And that was one of the things that our pastor talked about tonight um, is not holding back that pain. Um, and it was just absolutely beautiful. Um, we sang some carols. Our pastor gave a really beautiful message full of practical things, but also just so much equipping. Um, it was so good. And then they had, you grabbed, you got like, um, a, a paper gift tag when you walked in and we were to write the name of our loved one on the paper and any kind of message that we wanted. Um, and then we could hang it on the tree at our, um, when we were ready and they played some beautiful Christmas music. And it wasn't like carols or anything like that, but it was like songs of loss and, and pain. And um, they were beautiful songs. And I had the hardest time just writing his name on that tag. I just, it took me a while to even start, but I wrote him a little message how we missed him and his brother and sister miss him so much. Cole has asked for him for Christmas and how I wish that we were getting ready for his arrival right now. I wished him a Merry Christmas and told him I loved him um, and I hung my tag on the tree and it was beautiful. I shared a picture on my Instagram. Um, yeah, it was just really nice. So... We ended up back at Jane's parents' house because uh, the kids were there. My sister-in-law was watching them. And my in-laws ended up coming home because we were both at the service together. And we just talked a little longer than we should have. It takes us about 20 minutes, um, 25 minutes to get home. Got the kids in. Jane's not feeling well at all. He's got a really bad cold. So I'm going to share with you um, just one of the things that I do when my people are sick. And it involves one of my favorite essential oils, Easy Air. So I'm going to flip you around and share with you what I do. So this is kind of a natural alternative to Vicks. 
only I find it works so much better. When I was a kid, like Vicks was the thing. Even as an adult, I like Vicks up big time. Oh my gosh, that's foundation. It really shows up like really hardcore on my hand. You can already see that in real life. Um, so anyways, what I do is I just add some coconut oil. See, I've got a little bit here already. I add just coconut oil, the hard stuff, to a little dish like this. And then I add some drops of Easy Air. So Easy Air, I don't know if it's going to tell me what all's in it. I don't think so. I might have to peel back the label, and I don't really want to do that. But it's a bit peppermint. It's a bit wintergreen. It's a bit like help you breathe like crazy when you are ill. And I love to rub this on my sinuses, on my chest, my back, on my feet. And the same thing for my kiddos when they're sick. Now, I'm going to make this for Shane, and I'm going to add a few more drops than I would for my kiddos. I just do one or two for my kiddos. It is several tablespoons of coconut oil because I want it to be nice and diluted for them. But for him, I'm going to do a couple more. I'm also going to put um, Easy Air in our diffuser. I'm going to also add some On Guard, which is an immunity-boosting blend, and maybe a couple drops of lavender to help him sleep well. So... He's taking a detox bath right now, um, and that has Epsom salts. And in the Epsom salts, I mix um, lemon essential oil, lavender essential oil, and then I did add a couple drops of On Guard. Dump that in the tub, um, and then I add um, a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, and it just makes you feel amazing. If you want to see how I do that detox bath, I have it highlighted on my Instagram stories. Um, I love it. It just makes me feel so good even when I'm not sick. It just, if ever I'm feeling like super sluggish and just like really run down, I take this detox bath and I feel amazing. So anyways, I'm going to mix this thing up and then I'm just going to go lay in bed, wait till Shane's done so I can wash all my makeup and then just read and relax for tonight. Anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you later. Bye.